He was giving all of his blood. He was willing to give all of his blood to die so that another person could live. Just a little boy. This is what Christ did for us. Christ was willing. If there was just one sinner, Christ would have been willing to give up all his blood so that we could live. We read in the Desire of Ages, the withdrawal of the divine countenance from the Savior in this hour of supreme anguish pierced his heart with a sorrow that can never be fully understood by man. Listen to this. So great was this agony, his mental, spiritual agony, that his physical pain was hardly felt. The passion of the Christ, that's all it dwells on, his physical pain. We think of the pain that he must have felt when the nails were driven through his hands and his feet, when the cross was put on his back, when the crown of thorns was gushed down on his head, probably jiggled around a little, when he had whips on his back, and as he carried the cross to Golgotha and hung there on the cross. We think of that kind of pain. It says his mental anguish was so great he didn't even hardly feel that. That's how much anguish he was going through. This is another powerful statement. The Savior could not see through the portals of the tomb. Hope did not present to him his coming forth from the grave a conqueror or tell him of the Father's acceptance of the sacrifice. He feared that sin was so offensive to God that their separation was to be what? Eternal. Christ had no thought of rising from the dead. Sure, he gave the prophecy to his disciples that after three days he would rise. But according to this, he didn't even understand what that meant. He did not think he was going to rise from the dead. Christ was willing not to just die. Many of us are willing to die for another person, but we know we're going to live again. Amen? Christ was willing to give his life for eternity never to live again. Why? So that we could live forever. He was willing to die forever so that we could live forever. He died our death so that we could live his life. Imagine the grief he must have felt. We haven't even tasted a little glimpse of heaven. He was in heaven. He was at the top of heaven, being served by millions of angels. And now he's saying goodbye to life forever. Praise God that he raised from the dead. But he was willing to give all of this up so that we could live the only planet to sin. And he gave it up for us. He could have, and we're gone. Sin is taken care of. But a loving God would never do that. And I praise God for that. So our question is why? Why did he do it? Why would he be willing to give up his life? We hear about love, 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 love all the time. But have we let it sink in how much he really loved us? How much of us love any person on this planet enough to say goodbye to life forever, never to live again. We as Christians have the hope of the resurrection. We as Christians have the hope that we will live again. But why on earth would he say goodbye to life forever? For the only sinful planet is beyond me. Our scripture reading said, For God, who said light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. The glory of God shone through Christ. And I'd like to suggest that the greatest prophecy ever given, greater than 2,300 days, greater than this many weeks and that many days and this many years, was Emmanuel, God with us. The greatest prophecy 
and the greatest promise. Not just God coming with us the first time, but the promise that he's coming again. And when